Alrighty, it's uh, Wednesday, February 13th, 2013. Yeah, it is time for the next vlog. <laughs> yeah, these things come up on a daily basis. It's, it's kind of it's a little rough to keep up with everything, and uh, but I think we've got a good conversation going. And if I can remember exactly what we talked about yesterday, uh, we were talking about. Uh, uh, about uh, boxes and piers. That was off of uh, uh, Morgan Page loves uh, 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 of her her video. She talked about boxes and how about people uh, sort of you know kind of label each other, put each other into boxes, and, and generally society does that. Uh, but at the same time. <laughs> In the comments below, there was somebody there who was protesting about, you know, being put into boxes. And the problem is, is that even the people who protest about being put into boxes, these are a lot of these uh, so-called uh, non-mainstream people, really, you know, this is sort of, uh, you know, there's these alt-rock indie people, uh, not really people, but, you know, uh, that that type of person, uh, they consider themselves to be not part of the mainstream. Uh, in many cases, they're not part of the mainstream. But what happens is that what boxes them and labels them is that uh, when you sort of stray from the middle of the mainstream or are somewhat kicked out of the mainstream and end up into a group of people or a group of peers... Uh, that are like yourself, and the thing is, is that not everybody is in the mainstream. There are all, all people who are in different groups. Uh, all of a sudden, if you're part of that main group, you, in, other, in other words, you've conformed enough to that particular group of people, uh, even though they're not mainstream, then you become boxed and labeled because you have a peer grouping that you have a sufficient amount in common with that you can actually say, yeah, now that you are part of that peer group. And so, an alt-rock, you know, alt-rock, you know, alt uh, uh, indie group, uh, like, like Nirvana, uh, that, that was many years ago, they were sort of the, they formed this, uh, the, uh, the uh, music genre known as grunge rock, or basically, they were basically a, a garage type of band, uh, and, uh, uh, was it the uh, Tukes became the Canadian Tukes, uh, or the uh, sort of like the sailor, uh, the uh, short, the shoreman's hat uh, uh, became sort of part of, uh, if you want to call it, I, I call it this way, it's, it's the uniform of uh, or dress code of the uh, grunge rock uh, 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 type of person. Just the way, if you look at uh, goth. Uh, these uh, the so-called goth people who call themselves goth or identify themselves as a goth, as goth uh, you see them walking uh, by themselves or with a small group of people in school. But as soon as you go to one of their conventions, and they do have conventions, just like uh, nerds have their cons and so on and so forth. Uh, now all of a sudden, the 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 sort of the, the stated individuality, why there's you know that, that they want to stand out from the crowd, all of a sudden disappears. And this is what I was talking about even with the rockers uh, who were into Ozzy Osbourne, uh, you know, as an example, that those, those people who are in the heavy metal, and death metal, uh, as much as they protest about being part of the mainstream society and being boxed and labeled, as soon as you go to one of their concerts, you see that everyone's dressed alike, and that all of a sudden this whole. Uh, uh, argument of individuality disappears because you're in a group of people who are fundamentally all alike. So I think boxes and peers are not only, only something that, that uh, we give to other people, but we ourselves desire to be part of a box or, or a peer group. And that's what the, most people are. People want to be part of a peer group. And one of the things, the problems with nerds in the, you know, in themselves is that uh, that you don't like being a nerd because you're not part of a peer grouping. In other words, the more uh, unlike you are the rest of society, and that's, that, that's true about intelligence, and as your intelligence rises, you become separate and distinct from society, from the peer groupings. 
And because uh, as you go up in, in the level of intelligence, uh, the number of people who are like you decrease. Uh, it is less likely that you will find a peer grouping that you'll actually fit into. And so this is where you get the, uh, the the peer grouping or the box, if you want to call it the label, uh, lose the read decks. Uh, these are primarily people, including myself, uh, I fall into that group, who don't fit into any one peer group. While we do have some overlapping distinctions, so, you know, like I... Most, uh, you know, the closest fit to a box and peer group that you could say is me as a geek and nerd, and primarily I'm the science, scientist, sort of science geek and nerd. Uh, but I understand that, that, that the position that I'm in is uh, very individualistic. There's not a lot of people who are in, in doing what I'm doing. And so it is socially isolating. So from the perspective of a person who's looking in on the peer peer grouping in society, uh, because uh, I myself had looked around for a peer grouping and realized I just don't fit into any peer grouping. I have some commonalities with some of the peer groupings, but uh, not enough to uh, fundamentally conform to a particular peer grouping. Uh, other people have that. Other, more, in fact, most people have a peer group that they primarily hang out with that are pr primarily like they are. Uh, and this is sort of how most social structures work, is that you have somebody in the, 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 or a group of people that you have uh, uh, enough in common with that they become your peer group. And that sort of fun, that, that's fundamentally your boxes, your labeling, and so on and so forth. And this is sort of even the people who protest about being put into boxes, they themselves, when it comes down to... Uh, choosing to be in a box or not being a box, in other words, being in the loser and reject, in a reject box, they will actually not want to be in the loser and reject box, but will actually, you, you'll find that they do have a distinct peer grouping, even though it may not be uh, obvious in the general social setting, when you see them go to their particular, or if they have a particular, and usually they do, a particular peer group that they go to on the off hours of school or when they're getting together with their peer group, then the distinction starts to disappear uh, of being isolated and they start having their own peer group and they're now in a particular box rather than not having a particular peer group. And that kind of, you know, that this is sort of uh, sort of brought forward by Jill on uh, Nerd, Nerd, Nerd Girls for the Win, uh, talking about... Uh, Nerds, Geeks, and in her title, her video title, Nerds, Geeks, and Alien Abductions. Uh, she was talking about whether or not you can define and classify a nerd. And I think is you can classify and, def and, and define nerds because it depend your, ner your nerddom really depends on where your primary source of intelligence comes from, where your where your uh, interests lie. Uh, like a science geek and the, the drama nerd, the, both of the nerds, are two totally different type of nerds. The things they like are not, even though they both read a lot and both study a lot, uh, a, 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 a drama nerd will not cross over more often than not, this is not, this is sort of a generalization, it will not, more often than that, will not cross over into the science nerds. And the science nerds will more often than not stay within their peer grouping and not cross over into the drama nerds. And so you have, even within the nerddoms, and it, they are the nerddoms. They, there is the drama geek, there's the literary geek, there's the uh, history geek, you know, the polyglot. Uh, that the polyglot is not necessarily history, is the person who speaks multiple multiple languages. Uh, so you're a language geek. Uh, you have TV geeks, you have uh, movie geeks, you have uh, anime geeks, you have uh, then you have your science geeks, and the science geeks are actually different than the techie geeks. Techie geeks do have an understanding of science, but they are not primarily into the sciences the way a science geek would be uh, in terms of understanding the more, the more theoretical aspects and going to more the, uh, uh, the, the higher, more esoteric levels of understanding of the universe. And that sort of your level of geekdom as you start moving into the sciences. Uh, the lowest level of geekdom in your sciences is uh, is basically 
uh, psychology and sociology. Uh, and then from there you move on up. That's your entry level of your geekdom in, uh, in science. And then you move up the ladder. From there you move into biology is the next level. Then there's chemistry. And then from chemistry you move into, into, into physics. And then from physics you get into the very tiny end the people who are actually working in quantum mechanics and, and the sort of the leading edges of uh, the, the, the structure of the universe. And I think as you move, move up these sort of lines in, into these different nerddoms and geekdoms, uh, what ends up happening is you end up finding that your, your peer group starts to thin out the number of people who are in that group as a total start to really drop off. And this sort of ends up sort of, in many cases, isolating. The more isolated your field, the more isolated you are, and the less likely you are to fit into any one particular grouping. And so you can... And, and I look at this, you do you can define nerddoms, you can define geekdoms. So there is a study to geekology, there is a study to uh, uh, nerdology, and that's sort of where I, I came up with the list, the, my, my playlist here, geekolia, that's the Greek the Greek for geek study, and that's sort of my approach to everything. Anyways, that's it for today. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow and uh, have another discussion. All right, take it easy.